Uh, and the next speaker is uh, Joy Wolfram from uh, Houston, Texas, I guess from uh, Mauro Ferraris Institute. Yes. And she will, take about, ma, ma, she will talk about uh, multi-stage delivery of sRNAs. Yes, thank you. So I'm Joy Wolfram, and uh, my, the title of my talk is Multi-Stage Delivery of sRNA Therapeutics. And before I get started, I want to thank the organizers and Dr. Beat Leffler for uh, arranging this wonderful conference. So I'm in the Mauro Ferrari group in... Uh, at the Houston Methodist Research Institute in Texas in the United States. And yesterday, uh, Professor Ferrari gave a talk about multistage delivery. So I'm just gonna give a brief overview of the platform we use and then talk specifically about the delivery of uh, small interfering RNA. So the multistage vector has three uh, stages. The first stage vector consists of a porous silicon particle um, in the, it's a microparticle, and it's typically disc-shaped, as we've shown that discoidal particles have increased interactions with tumor blood vessels, and therefore also have increased tumor accumulation. And within the pores of this particle, we can uh, load nanoparticles, and the material is biodegradable, so with time these nanoparticles uh, will be released. And the nanoparticles represent the second stage vectors, which can be anything from liposomes to micelles to polymeric nanoparticles and metal nanoparticles. And finally, we have the third stage payload, for instance, siRNAs, miRNAs, chemotherapeutics, or antibiotics. And the great thing about this platform is that it can be customized to desired application. So of course, we can pick uh, which therapeutic agent to use, which nanoparticle to use, but we can also change the size, shape, porosity, charge, and surface functionalization of uh, the first stage microparticle. So this represents a physics-based approach to personalized medicine, whereby we change the physical properties of the microparticle um, to address, for instance, interpatient variability. So this was a brief overview of the platform. So now I'm going to talk about um, siRNA delivery and why do we want to work with small interfering RNA. There's two major advantages. The first is that we can, in theory, suppress any gene. So there's broad applicability. And the second advantage is that it's specific targeting. Typically, siRNAs are more specific than conventional drugs that have several off-target effects. But there's also several disadvantages of free sRNA. So uh, these biomolecules are large in size and they have a negative charge which makes uh, cellular internalization problematic. They're also susceptible to degradation by nucleases and this makes uh, stability an issue. Furthermore, some forms of sRNA can uh, cause immune acti activation um, which is, of course, a safety concern. And as with all therapeutic agents, we want to achieve a favorable biodistribution and a favorable intracellular location. So to overcome some of these challenges, um, we loaded the sRNA inside the multistage vector. So we start with a silicon microparticle that in our case, in this study, was one micrometers in diameter. The first thing we did was we conjugated it to arginine, then to PEI, and finally we mixed it with sRNA that was loaded inside the particle due to uh, electrostatic interactions. And as the silicon uh, material gradually degrades within the body, this triggers the formation of polymeric nanoparticles that have sRNA, and these nanoparticles are designed to navigate in the tumor microenvironment and get internalized into the cells, while the first stage microparticle um, binds to the tumor vasculature. So here we, here we see a 10-day period of how the particles gradually degrade, and this, of course, um, causes the sustained release of sRNA. So we looked at the intracellular uptake of these particles in vitro using fluorescent uh, sRNA, and we see that after one day, the sRNA is present inside the cells, and we can still detect it after 12 days. 
And then with scanning electron microscopy, we can see the particles interacting with the cell membrane. Then we looked at the polymeric nanoparticles um, inside the cells with confocal microscopy, again using fluorescent siRNAs, and we co-stained for a lysa tracker. And we see at the earlier time points, the siRNA is co-localized with the lysosomal marker, but at later time points, um, there are some siRNAs that have escaped uh, the lysosomal structures. And of course, PEI is known in the literature to facilitate the release of nucleotides from the lysosome due to perhaps the proton sponge effect or other alternative mechanisms. So then once we've looked at the um, in vitro particle uptake, we did some in vivo experiments using a mouse model for orthotopic breast cancer. And we gave a single injection intravenously um, with 50 micrograms of sRNA inside the MSV. And when we processed the tumor tissue, we could see the fluorescent sRNA inside the tumor. And then we looked at um, STAT3 sRNA to see whether protein levels could be suppressed inside the tumor tissue. And indeed, we saw a significant reduction in the levels of STAT3 protein. We also compared this to liposomal delivery of sRNA, and we saw that the MSV uh, was more efficient at suppressing the protein levels. So, of course, now that we've seen that the system shows efficacy in vivo, we wanted to look at the safety. So the first thing we did was acute immunotoxicity analysis after a single injection, and we looked at cytokines, chemokines, and colony-stimulating factors. And I, I apologize, these graphs are pretty small, and they have a lot of groups, but the take-home message is that all the groups that contained PEI that was not conjugated to the porous silicon material displayed um, immunotoxicity. However, when the PEI was conjugated to the silicon particle, that is the MSV, no um, immunotoxicity could be observed. Similarly, when we looked at subacute toxicity, we gave weekly injections for four weeks, measured the body weight, the hematology, organ histology, we saw no toxicity with the MSV. However, when we looked at the white blood cell counts, again, the groups that had PEI displayed abnormal levels, while the group with MSV had normal uh, white blood cell counts. Also, when we looked at markers for liver toxicity, the values were slightly elevated in the PEI groups that were not conjugated to the silicon particle, while the MSV displayed normal levels. And these in vivo results were correlated with an in vitro cell viability assay, where we again see that PEI reduces the viability to 50%. However, when it's conjugated to porous silicon, there's no reduction in cell viability. So to conclude, um, this system is easy to use as the sRNA loading is a simple mixing step, so you can easily load it with any sRNA you want. Um, we get a sustained release uh, due to the gradual degra degradation of the silicon material. Um, we get lysosomal escape due to the polymeric nanoparticles. Um, we see some efficacy in suppressing protein levels in vivo. We did not observe any immunotoxicity or subacute toxicity. In fact, we found that conjugation to the silicon particles prevents PEI toxicity. And previous studies have shown that the MSV can increase tumor accumulation, again, due to the disc-shaped microstructure that increases the interactions with uh, tumor blood vessels. So these results taken together suggest that perhaps the MSV could be a good delivery system for small interfering RNA. And I want to end by acknowledging the people who made this research possible. So Professor Mauro Ferrari is my supervisor in the United States, and then um, Haifa Shen is an assistant professor at Houston Methodist, and then Jian Liang Shen, a postdoctoral fellow, who um, played a major role in um, attaining these results. And I also want to acknowledge our funding sources. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for those very clear and uh, nice times. Uh, um,
presentation. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you for this very nice presentation. Um, I, I have a trouble in understanding how these uh, vesicles, not, not these vesicles, these particles, the multi-stage particles, given the physical attributes that you are really mentioning, a one micron diameter and probably a thickness of about 0.2 at least uh, micron, how these things uh, can really localize in tumors. And I was wondering whether, because no one can argue that you have the, uh, the you are decreasing the protein levels in you have your pharmacological target is being achieved. So I was wondering whether you have the system disintegrates into small uh, silicon particles with, with your SI RNA, and that's how you, you reach the tumor. Because I, I still have trouble understanding physically how you can uh, really administer such a large particle and expect to beat uh, smaller particles that have been shown by many people to have much better tumor penetration. That's an excellent question, and I didn't talk a lot about that. But uh, like you said, we believe that it does disintegrate, so we don't, we don't believe that these MSVs are actually entering the tumor microenvironment or even the cells, if so, to a small extent. So what they're probably doing is attaching to the tumor blood vessels because of the shape, and then the nanoparticles can then uh, take advantage of the EPR effect once they're released into the, blood, uh, into the tumor vasculature, they can then penetrate the tumor. But I don't think that these, um, these microparticles are getting internalized. But, but does this disintegration happen in the, in the intravascular system or, or after? Uh, because in my mind, it has, to have, it has to happen inside the blood. Yes, it happens inside the blood. Inside the blood. Yes. Okay. Could you then perhaps even live without the silicon particles, without the, meso without the porous particles? Uh, what happens if you give uh, simply the arginine, PEI? Okay, then you have an increased toxicity. That's yeah. your problem. I think also the, the biodistribution will not be as good. Yeah, yeah. So because they, um, it's a biomimetic approach, so we're utilizing the shape of platelets. So they actually, the particles, they marginate against the blood vessel wall, while spherical particles <coughs> tend to be in the middle, like red blood cells, they're in the middle of the vessel, so they don't interact with the actual endothelium. But if you have this disc shape, it's gonna slide against the endothelial, endothelium, increasing the chance that it will attach, and especially in inflamed endothelium, you're gonna have these kind of interactions. Uh, as a follow-up of this, did you do any pharmacokinetics for these particles and try to maybe label them and see how much is then at the endothelial, uh, endothelium of the tumor? How yeah. much is arriving there? Uh, definitely, but not in this study. So we have other studies looking at that. So um, usually we can achieve 5% of the injected dose in the tumor, but it's attached to the tumor vasculature when we look at ICP for the silica. Silicon. So it's not a sort of uh, maybe a sort of aggregation you also get maybe, and it is a sort of embolization of tumor vessels. Could be, it's possible. Could be. Yeah. It's not well characterized yet. Yes. Okay. So um, I just want to push on that just a little bit further. Um, the the change in toxicity of the PEI and arginine with this, how much of these? <coughs> um, delivery vehicles are actually coming off with the PEI arginine, and do you think that's making a secondary complex that's actually reducing the overall toxicity as it's degrading? Do you understand what I mean? You said they're, they're breaking down, right? Yeah, I think most of them will form the nanoparticles once the silicon degrades. But have you been able to figure out exactly how much of the silicon and the PEI are together after these things are broken down? Just, I'm just curious yeah. about the hydrodynamic change of the So actually when we, when we um, degrade the silicon, we can see that almost all of the PEI forms the nanoparticles with the sRNA, but the silicon is not, uh, not in this complex. Not at all. Not at all, yeah. 
Well, just, I just was wondering about the toxicity studies, which looked like they were done after two or three days, and I just wondered if with um, more chronic treatment, whether that might actually look yeah. worse, and that would be something to follow up. Yeah, so you're right, the immunotoxicity <coughs> was done after a single injection. The subacute toxicity was done um, after four weeks, once a week injection, but of course we don't have uh, studies in, the, uh, in this case for the long-term toxicity uh, beyond one month. So, one, one last question, please. Uh, which is the role of arginine? Um, so, arginine help, helps us <coughs> conjugate the PEI. This is the first role. And the second role is that it also helps reduce the toxicity since it binds to the primary amine groups of the PEI, which have been found to cause toxic effects. Okay, then many thanks again.